welcome to the Mom as Well podcast, where we are digging deep into the gifts and the gaps of foster and adoptive parenting. I'm Tara Hutton, and I'm glad you're here. Mama's Well. Yes, she is. Well, hello, hello, hello. Um... Wow, today I have something to talk about that's very personal, and um, I might have to look at my notes a lot on this one. Um, started thinking about this because recently my daughter turned eight, and her mother, um, her birth mother, reached out to tell her happy birthday. She has reached out every single birthday um, since we've had both the girls. She doesn't miss birthdays and big holidays. She always reaches out to to wish them well. And I just think that is beautiful. And I'm really grateful for that. And it got me thinking, um, you know, I mean, not all situations, not all adoptions, not all, um, situations where, where we are adopting another person's child. Um, is that feasible? I mean, it just isn't always that way. Um, but in our situation it is, and is it awkward at times? Has it been awkward at times? Yes, yes, it is. Um, but I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that we just move past the awkward and, and stay connected. Um, I think that's a real gift to them. I think that we both, I mean, it's hard to be, you know, my daughters have two mothers, I mean, that's just the way it is. And I think we both kind of understand that. And we both know that we play a powerful role in their lives. Um, And I think that's a gift. And so it got me thinking about my own childhood. And um, and so I want to share a little bit of it. Um, When I was two, my mom remarried, uh, around two, my mom remarried. We didn't talk about it a lot, so I can't tell you if some things are not exact for me, but um, around two, they remarried, and I had two dads, just like that. And um, I had what I considered a good dad and a bad dad. At least that's my, my perspective. Um, in the 1970s, divorce was considered shameful, or at least it was in our family. And um, I think that my mother's shame about it um, became my shame and shame occurs when we keep silent and that's what we did in our family we kept silent we did not talk about it at all Um, I don't remember having conversations um, about it the conversations were always uh, very brief very short very um, surface and I was always told let's don't talk about this in front of your dad meaning my my new dad my stepdad because um, the reason was that um, that I that that would hurt him and so um, you know what I loved this man like he's my dad he he remains my dad Um, and he was, he loved me and we had fun together. We played together. I I have lots of wonderful memories. And so I didn't want to hurt people and especially not him. And so I kept quiet. Um, I don't think that staying quiet was meant to hurt me. I don't, I don't believe that at all. Um, sometimes we can love people and not know exactly um, what they need or how best to love them, I guess. Um, And I think that was the case for my parents. I don't think that they were aware of what the keeping silent was doing to me. I wasn't aware. I didn't become aware um, until I was an adult. Um, Okay, what what keeping silent, uh, keeping silent means shame. I mean, that's, that's what it is. We keep silent about things that we feel shame about. And so, um, I can't talk about shame without Brene again, Brene Brown. She defines shame as the intensely, I'm going to read this. It's, it's a good one. Uh, define shame as the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed. That word gets me. Um, we are flawed and therefore we are unworthy of love and belonging. 
that something that we've experienced or something we've done or failed to do has made us unworthy of connection. And that's shame. And that's what being silent um, does. So, you know, maybe my parents didn't want to talk about it because they wished, and I understand this, that, that it just never happened. You know, they wished that that my mom had never married my biological father, maybe that I was just the child of the two of them. I, I don't, I mean, obviously, sometimes we wish things could be different. Um, they wished it, it didn't happen, but you know what? It did happen, and, and, and stuff does happen. Addiction happens, incarceration happens, abuse happens, neglect happens, divorce happens, um, death happens. These things happen, and... Um, you know what, our kids that come to us through adoption and foster care, they wouldn't be in our homes if something hadn't happened. And so we can't pretend like it didn't happen. We need to become aware. We need to become aware of what's happened and, you know, and, and, and becoming aware that they need to understand when it's time, at a developmentally appropriate times, what's happened. Um, or else they carry the shame, okay? Um, and then their, you know, I'm going to use Brene's quote again, their very own painful feelings surrounding the loss of their parents cause them to believe because the children are egocentric. Remember, they believe that everything that's happening around them is about them. So when they have these painful feelings of loss, their parents are gone, um, they begin to believe that they are somehow flawed or unworthy of love, belonging, and connection. Wow. I mean, that's the last thing we want. That's the last thing we want for these kids. Um, it's the last thing my parents wanted for me, but they weren't aware. They weren't aware of what keeping silent was doing. And so, hey, um, you know what? There's gifts in the gaps, right? And so, um, Luckily, I didn't stay stuck in that shame. Um, a friend of mine, um, a dear friend of mine, over a decade ago, um, he said to me, you know, Tara, a flower won't bloom if it doesn't learn to love its soil. <sighs> um, I knew what he was inviting me to do. He was inviting me to stop compartmentalizing my life, to embrace all of it, to take it all, to, to learn to love my soil that mixed up all the pieces of it. That's what I needed. I needed that so that I could bloom, so that I could grow, so that I could thrive. And um, I needed help to do that. You know, um, that that took a lot. It took a lot of vulnerability because it was very scary. And, and that brings me, I just said a huge word, um, vulnerability. Um, shame keeps us stuck. Okay. We're, we're in hiding. Um, and I wanted to be free and, and the way to get out of hiding is to expose, to become vulnerable. And so I needed to tell the truth about where I came from, about the loss that I experienced, um, from my birth father. Um, I needed to tell the truth to myself I needed to talk about it with those I love, my parents. And honestly, that was hard. That was really, really hard because they, they weren't ready for that. And um, that was hard for them. That was hard for me. But I had to do it. And, um, you know, I, I, I would like to say it would have been much easier if, if I would have had their permission, if I could have had their buy-in. Um, that would have been good. <laughs> Um, but I didn't, and I had to move forward instead. That's vulnerability. If I knew that I was going to be accepted in, in that, it wouldn't have been vulnerability. It would have just been, you know, moving forward in the, in the next step. But, but I had to risk. I had to risk talking about it, being open, exposing. Um, I had to embrace my whole story, my whole story, all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, that's... That's what, that's what moves shame. Um, it's kind of like vulnerability, honesty, exposure. That's like the kryptonite to shame. It can't survive. 
Um, and so vulnerability is the kryptonite for shame. Um, our foster and our adopted children, like they have messy, shameful stories. I mean, they wouldn't be in our homes if they didn't. That's why they're there. Um, and so there's been a break. There's been um, a crack. And we are filling that gap. We're, we're filling that, that, that crack. But, but we don't fill it by ignoring it. We have to, we have to help them deal with their shame. And sometimes, I mean, really all the time, <laughs> we have to deal with our own first. Um, I say this a lot, but we can't give what we don't have. And so if we have shameful places in us, it's going to cause us to want to, to keep theirs shut down too. But when we expose, when we become vulnerable, when we work through our shame, we invite them and help them to do the same. And, and that's what they need. Um, we don't fight shame by hiding their stories. I want to read this so I get it right. We don't fight shame by hiding their stories or our stories. We fight shame by coming out of hiding through emotional exposure, by, through connection, right? Being there with them in their hurt. That's vulnerability. That, again, is the kryptonite of shame. I can't tell you how this is going to look for your family. Um, you know, becoming vulnerable, um, being there for your child in their pain, walking, walking in it with them. Um, remember, like Crystal Vento talked about, we enter into the pain together. That's vulnerability too. Beautiful. Um, but what I could tell you, and I, and I wrote these down, um, I could tell you what I needed from my parents, what I would have liked to have from my parents. Both my parents have passed away. Um, but you know what? I had a chance to tell them these things. And, um, and they understood the best that they could. Um, I still never really got what I would have liked to have received from them. Um, but that's okay okay. Um, we, when we know better, we do better. And so um, I want to share this with you because it would have been profound for me um, if my parents would have understood this and could have, could have just walked me through it. Um, there's three things. Number one, I needed them to validate my loss. I needed to know that it was a safe place for me to feel all of my feelings, even the big ones, and for them to not make those feelings about them, you know, for, for my mom to not make my, my sad, my hurt, my loss about what she did wrong, because it wasn't, it wasn't about it. I would have probably, I would have made the same decisions that she made. That doesn't take away from the pain that it caused. And so, um, let me repeat that. I needed them to validate my loss. I needed them to be a safe place for me to feel all of my feelings and not make it about them. Number two, I needed my parents to reassure me that I was strong and I was brave and that I was going to be okay um, and that they were going to be there for me through the whole ups and downs, okay, not okay, through all of it. But I was strong and I was brave and that I was going to be okay. I needed them to reassure me. Um, and third, I needed to know, oh, this is a big one. I needed to know that I didn't have to choose one dad over the other, that I could love them all. I could, I could, I could love all my parents and I could recognize the unique gifts that each of them gave me. And wow, that's powerful. Um, you know, love is not, it doesn't have to be scarce. It, it flows in abundance if, if we'll let it. And so that, those are the three things that I'd like, you know, that I would like to, I don't know, just encourage us foster parents to, to give to our children. And it takes vulnerability because we're risking, you know, it's a risk. It's a risk for us to talk about their birth family. I mean, what, what could that mean? That could, what, if, what if that means that they want to go back there? What if that means they go seek them out and try to find them? I mean, here's the, de here's the deal. I believe that if we give them the space, the safe place to do it in our home, they won't, 
feel the need to do it without us. Um, just ponder that. Just think about that. Um, okay. Okay. One more Brene Brown quote. <laughs> uh, this isn't really a quote. This is just something that I try to remember. Brene says, and Brene, I call her the shame guru um, and the shame, the vulnerability guru. She, she's, she's been studying this for decades, but um, she says that we never completely alleviate shame. We just become resilient to it. And um, so, like I said, the kryptonite, you know, when, when vulnerability walks in, shame gets weak. So we become resilient. We become strong with the kryptonite, strong with the vulnerability. The shame weakens. It lessens. Um, and that that's honestly, that's what we need. Um, some of us, um, you know, some of us had this in our families. Some of us had a space to be, to feel all of who we were. And some of us didn't. But isn't that what we want to give our children? Don't we want to give them a place to have and a freedom to have and be all that they are? The good, the bad, the ugly, accepting of every, understanding that they came, the, the, the parents that created them, biologically created them, they're part of them. And to not accept that means we're not accepting part of that child doesn't mean we have to accept um, what their parents did or didn't do or if they hurt them or, you know, harmed them. Obviously, that's not what I'm saying. But no matter what, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a love there. There's a bond there. And the more we investigate that, the more we dig into that and understand that, the better we are equipped to help our children because it, it, because if it, if it was something you know really horrific, I guarantee you there's shame attached to that. Um, the only way, only way, we get rid of shame is through vulnerability, is through embracing it, is through risking those conversations, giving them the space to be all of that. Um, all right, that is going to take me right to this week's Wisdom from the Well card. And I'd like to use my friend's quote that he told me um, over a decade ago. I don't remember exactly when it was, but, and that is, I've thought of it so long, it, it's, it must have power. Um, and that is, a flower won't bloom if it doesn't love its soil. And in my case, learn to love its soil um, either way. Um, so, so we all want to bloom. We want to help our kids bloom. And I think this is part of it helping them to recognize you, recognizing us, recognizing shame is there. And how do we become resilient? We expose, emotionally expose ourselves. We connect, we meet our children in their pain. Um, I hope this makes sense. This is deep stuff, um, but definitely worth pondering. All right. Thank you for joining. Let's um, I want to remind you, if you're listening on iTunes, some of you are listening on iTunes. If you're listening on iTunes, if you just take a second at the end of the podcast to give us a, rank, a rating, um, preferably a five star. And I'd love to have some comments from you. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, let me know what you think about this, you know, shame. Let me know what you think about um, connecting with birth families. I know it's a messy topic. I, I totally get that. Um, but I would love to hear some conversation in the comments on um, YouTube um, or in the comments on iTunes or actually one of the best places for conversation would be on my website. Below each podcast, there's a comment section um, that I can read those and I can actually reply back. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, thanks again. Thanks again for joining us and please remember to share this with your adoptive and foster communities and that's how we we care for one another and we get the word out to help support one another. So have a great week and I'll see you right here next Tuesday. Mama's way. Yes, she is.